Welcome back to the second tutorial of Platform Builder. This will cover page four of the manual. We're gonna look at your workstation and how to start building your games. So let's get started. Let's go back to the empty game we created in the previous tutorial. I want to start in the course editor, so I will click Menu, Level Manager. Here's a level I wanna use. Select that, click Edit, and here we are. Now your workstation is everything you see down here. This is where you can select your music, your background, settings, save, the in-game manuals down here. There's a bunch of tools for you to work with at the bottom. And on the left is your item box. The item box displays all the different items you get to choose from to populate your game with. So if for instance, I select blocks, my selection is now displayed down here. I can go over to the game window and just click down to place a block. I can right click to delete blocks. I can click and drag to place multiple blocks. I can right click and delete to delete multiple blocks. Keep in mind that you cannot place items if any of these three tools are enabled. If you try, it will let you know. We'll talk about those later. If I want to change my selection, I go back to the item box and change it here, or I can click down here and choose my item from this list. Many items also have subcategories. These blocks, for instance, have multiple different styles to them that you can choose from by pressing these up and down arrows. I can also use the up and down arrows on my keyboard, or I can use a mouse wheel to scroll around between the different styles of blocks. Some items, like these ground tiles right here, have a ton of different subcategories. So to make this easier, we have a subcategory viewer or a tile set viewer. I click on that and now I can choose the tile that I want. Now it is selected, I can place it down. I press T as the hotkey to open up my tile set viewer once more. Click here, I have my next one and I can start building my projects this way. Now there's a quicker way. If I click on this twice or press the hotkey twice, T, it will shrink the tiles to the top right of my view. From there, I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move around as I go and start building things more efficiently. Now with these tiles, there's even a faster way with the smart tool, and we will look at that in a future video. If I go back to the item box, you will notice that you can click and drag things around to different places. This can be nice to organize, but it can also be useful because of these buttons down here. This arrow moves your selection from left to right, top to bottom. The other arrow goes in the reverse. This means that if you only have a couple items you like to keep using, let's say this item, this item, and this item, you can place them next to each other and then use these arrows to go between them quickly. Your left and right arrows on your keyboard will do the same thing and that will work even when this is closed. Some of the items in your workbox are for custom things. So for instance, I can go to game setup and create a custom enemy, change the look, the speed, etc. And when I am done, I will find that custom enemy by selecting this icon. And then instead of a tile viewer, I will be able to open the manager for custom enemies select the enemy I want. In this case, there's only one to choose from. And now I can place down my custom enemy. Let's take a look at a few more things in your workstation. The smart tool we will discuss in a future video. The move tool lets you move items. With this selected, just drag and release. The edit tool lets you edit certain items after they are placed down. Not all items have things for you to edit, but some do. For instance, I could place down a sign which displays a message. The default, it says hello. But if I want to change the message, I will enable the edit tool. I'll see a box show up over this sign, click on this, and I can change the message to something else. The copy tool works like an eyedropper. It lets you select an item that is already placed down. So in this case, I just copied my custom enemy. I'm ready to place some more of him. By default, some things cannot be placed on top of other things, and so that is what the free tool is for. With the free tool enabled, I can place enemies or whatever on top of all sorts of different things. I can press Ctrl Z to undo all that, Ctrl Y to redo that. I can also press this button down here, which also will undo my changes. Right here is your view settings. 
You can zoom in or out using these buttons right here. Alternatively, I can hold the control button and go in and out with my mouse wheel to do the same thing. The view settings also let you change the scroll speed for when you scroll around using the A, S, D, and W keys on your keyboard. And there are a few other settings there as well. The grid button will change the layout of the grid. That is useful because your placement box is always fixed to the grid. Unless, of course, you don't have a grid, in which case you can place things freely. Typically, the default grid that you start with is a nice placement scheme. But if you're working with ground tiles, for instance, you might want to be able to draw straight lines easier, in which case you will want a less fine grid. So I can drag and release, and I won't have as many problems shifting up or down because my grid is larger for me. If I want to go temporarily to a finer grid, I can hold G down, and now I have freer movement like this. And as soon as I release G, it will return back to the grid as I previously had it. Similarly, if I start on a fine grid, I have a little more option for mobility here, but if I hold G down, it will lock into a less fine grid that I can use temporarily and then release G to go back to how I had it. Area settings are right down here. There's a lot of controls for you to mess with if you want. Let's go back. I can save using this button down here. Saving happens automatically whenever you leave an area or an overworld or a title screen or whatever. And so in this case, we just went to the area settings, leaving the area, which caused it to save automatically. That is why this save button is grayed out because there's nothing more for us to save. But if I place something else down, now the save button is enabled and I can save once more. The test button will let you test your area. Now that I drop down a character, I can do that. If I use both player one and player two, I have the option to choose between a one player test or a two player test. In this case, it's just me, so I'm going to select one player. And I can test around with my single player. Pretty slick. Press escape to get out of that. On the far end, down at the bottom here is your in-game manual. Go here to review a lot of what we are discussing now. And then right above your in-game manual, last but not least, is this little guy right here. This is your assistant. He will tell you about almost anything. All you have to do is right click. For instance, I can right click on this button. I'll learn what this button does. Right click on any of these other buttons. I can open up my item box and right click on anything up here. Press P to pause, press P again to unpause, hold Q to go quickly, press escape to exit that early. Even my custom enemies, by right clicking on them, I can learn a little bit more about who they are and what they do. I'll press the up and down arrows to change my subcategory, right click again, and I get a description of the different enemy. I can go to the menu and right click on the different menu options to learn what those things do. All different sort of stuff you can learn from this assistant. If I click on the assistant, I get some even more things that I can learn about here. There's an in-game platform builder tutorial, which is real nice. You can ask where you are. If I press one on my keyboard right now, he's gonna tell me a little more about this course editor that I'm currently in. So there's a lot there that'll help you learn platform builder in a very easy and quick manner. I wish every program had something like this. Let's hop over to the title screen editor. I'll go back to game screens, click title screen, now there's a special item that's useful for title screens. You have it everywhere, but it's a text item. And this is how you display text in your game. I'll just click right here, choose my font, my size. And for the title screen, this is a great opportunity to display the title of your game. Now there is a subcategory under text that you're gonna want to know about. And this subcategory is only available in the title screen editor. It's this right here. These are your buttons for when you start a new game. It allows you to select a new game, resume, options, or quit. If you go to the settings of the title screen, that is where you can select where to start when you launch a new game. You can start in a level or a world. I'll just begin here in the overworlds and select world one. So when I start a new game from this title screen, it will go to world one right here. Now for this to work, I'll need to drop a character down, a starting spot in my overworld, and I'll need a level icon too. From here, I choose an area which I want to go to, so I'll select this one. Now when I play the game, I will begin in this overworld, and as I move my character over to this icon, I will begin in this level. 
When I finish the course by touching an exit sign, it will take me back to the overworld. Now there's other ways to finish levels, which you can see under settings, and there are many other ways you can move around between areas and overworlds, which we will discuss once we dive into advanced mode for a future video, but that's how it all connects together. Let's run a quick test run just to show you how this goes. New game. I'll choose this one. Move over to my level icon. Hit enter to go in. Here's my level. Exit sign. Level is complete. Victory sequence. And now I'm back in my overworld. Perfect. I'll press escape to get out of that and then quit. And now we're back into the editor. So there you go. Now you're ready to start building your game. I'll see you in the next tutorial where we will discuss even more tips and tricks for selecting and placing items.